Climate change is a phenomenon that is happening throughout the world today. Rising temperatures, heavy floods, change of seasons, as well as desertification, and even snow smelting can be experienced anywhere. These disasters are caused by human activities such as deforestation, bushfires, household and industrial pollution, just to name a few. In Africa, for instance, the situation is becoming alarming. Smallholder farmers are the most affected by the said disasters. Therefore, agricultural production is on the decline. Hunger is threatening humanity, and people as well as animals are dying of starvation. This is the reason why climate protection has become a very sensitive issue, which is addressed by various governments and international NGOs. The United Evangelical Mission, based in Wuppertal, Germany, is one of these organizations. It is an international communion of churches with 36 members in Africa, Asia, and Europe. UAM's approach to address climate justice and environmental protection include the following activities and programs. Awareness building, advocacy, climate consultancy, project support, climate and environmental responsibility in its own operations and policies, networking, climate justice and human rights, theology and spirituality. To learn more about UEM, we have met Mr. Richard Madete, who is UEM consultant for environmental and climate management in Africa. In the following interview, the consultant gives a clear picture of what UEM does to promote climate justice at global level and specifically in Africa. UEM, United Evangelical Mission, um, saw the importance of taking this issue seriously because um, UN member churches in the, in, in the south, that is Asia and Africa, um, are seriously affected by climate change. So since 2008, uh, United Evangelical Commission decided to take, to put this in, in their priority areas. decided in that year to, to, to facilitate uh, creation of uh, two positions for climate protection consultants. I'm a consultant for the African region and I have a colleague in the Asian region. We are working with UN member churches in our regions to help them, to support them in planning and implementation of climate protection programs. Besides consultancy, there are many other examples to show that UAM is very active. We will present just a few of them. Let's consider awareness building. For example, the Youth Action Day, which is taking place every year on the 7th of December. Uh, we ask the youth in different youth member churches in Germany and in Asia, as well as in Africa, to do some actions and share with other youth in different continents what they are doing in protecting the environment. This has been going on very successfully and we hope through such means we will engage more people, we bring more awareness of climate protection to the community members and to the government. Networking is another program. UM is a member of various international networks. For example, it's a member of the World Council of Churches Working Group on Climate. Its contribution to various peace convocations is well appreciated. 
UEM also promotes networking among UEM churches from various regions. For example, we had this successful project in Indonesia. It was a visitation project where we went there, people from different churches, in UEM member churches. We visited uh, hot points of uh, environmental destruction and we came out with some points we sat together and we discussed this with uh, companies and uh, government officials what to do to reduce uh, destruction of environment and this was taken up by some churches for example the northeastern diocese of evangelical lutheran church in tanzania uh, which is led by bishop dr munga uh, he's, uh, he managed to call for a big congress, which later on uh, facilitated the establishment of Tanzania Land Forum. So this is a big thing, which is uh, actually supported also by the government of Tanzania. Concerning climate justice and human rights, on the 10th of December 2008 and 2011, UEM launched a campaign on the so-called Human Rights Day with the motto, the land will give its fruit and you will have all you want to eat and live in safety. Now, talking specifically about climate protection in Africa, this is what Mr. Richard Madete says. But before, let's recall that UEM work in the African region covers six countries, namely Tanzania, DR Congo, Rwanda, Cameroon, Namibia, and Botswana. The focal area of my work in the African region is in four points, I would say, uh, starting with um, helping smallholder farmers to adapt to climate change. We have to help these people to have the right seeds, the right varieties of crops which withstand, say, drought or floods, and um, also varieties of crops which withstand uh, uh, diseases. Uh, climate change is about also to, to irrigate the farms if it is not raining, and it is very good if we, we use renewable energy, say photovoltaic uh, uh, solar energy. And uh, secondly, it's about how we can reduce uh, emissions, actually what is based on uh, CO2 emission, carbon dioxide. How can we reduce emission? We advocate or we promote the use of renewable energy, um, say for lighting. Instead of using kerosene, we advocate uh, that the people start using uh, LED solar light kits. Uh, uh, this will help us to save the CO2 emissions and also to use energy saving stoves which um, also reduce the emission of CO2 by 60%. So by doing so we save our trees, we save our planet by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And third, we promote planting of trees and protecting of trees. It's no use if we plant more trees and we don't protect them. So this has also to do with uh, uh, promotion of use of uh, energy saving stores. And lastly, but very important aspect is um, advocacy work. We plead for the church leaders to do more in advocacy work. Uh, and this is actually, you know, in Africa, you remember churches are very big and they are doing a lot in provision of uh, social services. So they are very important for the governments. So being so, I mean they should also, the church leaders should also plead for the leaders, for the politicians to, to, to have the right policies, the right regulations for climate protection. These four focal areas are the pillars of the consultant's work. Mr. Madete admits that so far he is impressed by what African churches are doing. I'll give some examples, uh, starting with um, the help of uh, smallholder farmers in uh, the Anglican Church in uh, Rwanda, for example, 
also in the Presbyterian Church in Rwanda. Um, there are initiatives to to work with uh, government agronomists to produce the right varieties of banana, which withstand climate change, uh, application of uh, compost, manure. All these actually are very important aspects of climate protection. And if you go now to the second part, uh, we say that we have to reduce uh, uh, emission of uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, we have examples in uh, Tanzania, the Karago Diocese of Evangelical Lutheran Church has a um, very good project for uh, application of renewable energy. So we have secondary schools, we have hospitals which have been, uh, which are using uh, photovoltaic for lighting. And um, also in Cameroon, we have uh, the center, for example, for vocational training, the CPF, is training the youth how to install uh, renewable energy, photovoltaic um, plants. So, and uh, so many other examples. But if we go on to the third uh, part, I mean, to the, third, to the third point of my focal area for climate protection in Africa, which is about um, planting trees and protecting trees, we have a very good project in, um, going on now in Rwanda uh, with the uh, uh, Anglican Church. We have a CDM project there. Yeah? It is about promotion of energy saving stores which will now be distributed to the households so that they stop using the old traditional stores. And by doing so, they will save the emission of CO2. And this, since this is now supported by UEM with, with our partners like EED, we're going to distribute a lot and big number of stoves to the community. And um, this will um, contribute a lot to the climate protection. And lastly, we see also a lot of initiatives taken by church leaders in Africa in advocacy work. Well, I'm very happy now that uh, you and member churches in Africa are taking this issue of climate protection very seriously. And uh, I see a lot of actions, progress, uh, programs which are undertaken by you member churches. For example, of late, I've been to Cameroon. I've seen a lot of successful stories there. There are actions which are really um, exemplary. So, for example, uh, there is a program they are going on uh, of engaging pupils in uh, primary schools in climate protection. Uh, for example, there is a program which is saying grow with your tree. So when young people come to primary school, they are given a plant, a seedling, which they protect all the time, six years or eight years in the primary school, and this is growing with a tree. That's a very good project. We saw forests which were planted by these pupils. And uh, there is also a program of um, having herbal garden in schools. Uh, medicinal plants are planted in a garden and children are taught how the importance of indigenous traditional trees which also offer uh, not only uh, the benefits of being carbon sink, that, uh, that, that they, they absorb carbon dioxide, but also uh, medicine. Medicine, that is very important. But we saw also other um, actions like uh, biofarming. Biofarming is being introduced in Cameroon, and um, whereby uh, the farmers will learn to use compost manure instead of uh, artificial fertilizer. They will learn how to use um, biological herbicides instead of chemical herbicides. And these products will fetch more, better price. And um, that is, the, those, those are just a few examples whereby I emphasize that uh, you remember churches uh, uh, learn from each other. But there is still a lot to do and a long way to go in the fight against climate change. So what about the future? Now, the way forward is 
to see how we can involve the youth. In addition to the way forward, I see also the necessity of increasing the networking and also the issue of advocacy. Fighting climate change should be the concern of all, be they youth, media, church members, school and universities, non-governmental organizations, traditional rulers, church and government leaders. UEM has already shown its full commitment and is planning to do more in the years ahead. What about you? So, together let's take action. Let's fight against climate change, which is threatening our children's future. Let's put an end to our destructive activities. Let's protect our environment and strive for a greener planet. That's UEM Africa's call for a common struggle. That's our call. Yes, that is the call. The call. The call. That's good. Okay. Hmm. Charcoal. Hmm. We need to produce charcoal in a sustainable way hmm. because otherwise we we lose eighty percent of biomass.